I'm very proud of the results of the uh, chartered study, which was the study of hormones, androgen deprivation therapy, plus docetaxel versus uh, androgen deprivation therapy alone. Just going back in history there, that study was thought basically conceived in 2004 when we showed docetaxel was active in castration resistant disease. We didn't have abiraterone or enzalutamide at that time and I was, had the great honour and privilege and also the humbling experience to start that study with the premise that hormones plus chemotherapy, a drug active in the late stage, given earlier would be more active. It took us 10 years to find out the answer and it was a great opportunity to present that data and show that there was a benefit to the two together. The next question is, would you get as much bang for your buck if enzalutamide or abiraterone was used in that space? And that's the subject of clinical trials now. And the other clinical trial that is starting to be uh, involved in the development of is asking the question, androgen deprivation therapy plus docetaxel plus enzalutamide at the start of therapy, going after the less resistant cells in a greater uh, all-in approach up front. That's the subject of clinical trials, but one wonders and hopes that it will actually advance the field further and delay progression even further and improve survival even furthermore. So combination therapies early is an area of research that I'm actively involved in and, and I think is very promising. Now when we're thinking about combination therapies for castration resistant prostate cancer, I think the same tenet applies. Um, and I liken the, I think we need to think about two strategies, horizontal inhibition where you're attacking the androgen, androgen receptor axis together with agents like the androgen receptor antagonist, enzalutamide, uh, the ARN509 compound, with an agent like abiraterone which decreases the ligand on top of this uh, testosterone suppression. So that's one combination strategy which is in clinical trials and think should be, is being and should be evaluated. The other is other combinations of more what I describe as, sorry, what I was describing there was vertical inhibition. The androgen, androgen receptor, vertical inhibition with anzalutamide and abiraterone versus horizontal inhibition where you're going after the androgen receptor access in castration resistant disease with a non-specific anti-cancer approach with the chemotherapy. So studies of abiraterone plus docetaxel would be an example of and are ongoing and abiraterone plus enzalutum, uh, sorry, abiraterone plus docetaxel or abiraterone plus cabazitaxel or enzalutamide plus cabazitaxel. So there are horizontal inhibition studies that are ongoing and I think also very promising. The, those horizontal inhibition studies our extrapolations, I think, of what we saw with Chartered and I think give us pause to, and um, encouragement to think that it would be a viable strategy. So we mentioned earlier the Chartered study, which is an acronym which stands for Chemo Hormonal Therapy versus Androgen Ablation Randomized Trial in Extensive Disease Prostate Cancer. So it's an acronym that means something. It's also known as E3805. It was a study that was conducted by the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group with the support from the NCI and also with our collaborators from the Southwest Oncology Group and investigators around the United States. Sanofi um, also provided some support for the study and gave us drug to conduct it. So it was a team effort to do a randomized phase three study of androgen ablation, androgen deprivation therapy versus the same androgen deprivation with docetaxel given at 75 milligrams per meter squared every three weeks for six cycles and then stop and both arms continued the hormonal therapy alone. The study accrued 790 patients and we were particularly interested and investigators were particularly likely to refer patients who had a high volume of disease, the definition I gave earlier, four or more bony metastases, liberal or lung metastases speaking towards high volume patients who have a shorter time to progression and shorter survival. Two thirds of the patients ended up having the high volume of disease. And what we saw is that for the total population, 
the median survival was increased from 44 months to 57 months. There was a 40% decrease in the risk of death for those who got the chemotherapy early, and that's despite 129 of the 174 patients who progressed at the time of the analysis getting docetaxel when they had progression. So it wasn't that patients weren't getting docetaxel at some stage. Most were who were progressing getting docetaxel at progression, as well as agents like abirato and, and enzalutamide. So it really did suggest that patients who got hormonal therapy with chemotherapy, especially if they had had high volume disease, were more likely to live longer. When we looked at the patients with high volume, we noted that their median survival was actually 32 months. We increased that from 32 months to 49 months with giving the chemotherapy plus the hormonal therapy early. Namely, we got their cancer under control more effectively early, and that resulted in longer cancer control, longer time to progression, and longer survival.